Single coil pickups, noiseless single coil pickups. Can you hear the difference? There's a lot of debate. Today, we're gonna to do a blind test to see if I can hear the difference. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. And if you want to support the channel, visit our spring store link below for our custom swag and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, and check out our you know stuff that we sell. So we are doing a comparison today between um, the tried and true vintage single coil design and the noiseless single coils that so many people have to rely on when the, you know they're playing a gig next to a popcorn machine or something like that. Very true. And also, sometimes the pickups that they're stuck with that they want something in a certain price range, i.e., if you want an Ultralux, you're getting single coils that are noiseless. Yes. Um, which some people really like, and I've also heard some people somewhat complain about why they can't have you know, all the contours and the augmented D neck shape and stainless steel frets and all that without noiseless. So, well, you can. You just buy the guitar and you swap out the pickups. Uh, everybody wants to get a brand new guitar and immediately have to send it to a shop. Yeah. But, you know, there's been a big debate for a long time, and we should talk about the fact that noiseless pickups, noiseless single coils exist because of 60 cycle hum, which is prevalent on any kind of single coil. Here, I'll hold it for you. Like that. Um, any kind of single coil equipped guitar. And there are different ways of dealing with it. Um, you have noise gates that people use. You have hum debuggers that people use. Uh, that's what I use uh, whenever I'm playing a guitar and I'm trying to escape from that that's otherwise there. <laughs> well, hum debugger, it sounds like an insult from like a 1930s Brit. <laughs> Listen, you hum debugger. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to say that anymore. YouTube's gonna demonetize this video for foul language. So, um, yeah, there's lots of different ways of doing it, and builders have taken different approaches. Um, sometimes using a dummy coil somewhere in the guitar. Uh, a very common one with like Stratocasters is you reverse wound the middle pickup, and so when you're in two, you know, two and four, you don't have any 60 cycle hum. That's how my guitar is. But when you're in one, three, and five, you still do. Yeah. Um, so the answer for that is to have a noiseless pickup. And uh, I, I've always loved what Greg Cox said about you know people that don't like noiseless pickups. He says, I also call them unemployed. Uh, <laughs> because, and his point is, as a working musician, uh, if you like the single coil sound and you find yourself in all sorts of situations where you would have lots of noise, which if you're playing a variety of gigs is going to happen, um, then it can be a make it or break it type thing. Yeah. So, but what's happened over the years is there's been multiple generations. These are what Gen fives. These kind of are thing? Gen fives are over here, yeah. and over there you got V mod twos. Right. These are V mod twos because I was holding the wrong guitar for what I was referencing. So Gen five noises pickups means that they've gone through a few iterations, and the reason is this complaint that they don't sound right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we're very far removed from the lace sensor pickup days to a Gen 5 noises pickup. But one thing we should probably say at the onset, technically they're not single coils. That's true. They're stacked on buckers, technically speaking. Um, the real difference is you've got a second coil that is your dummy coil, or basically the reverse wound, and it makes up a very small portion of the pickup. It's there to get rid of the 60 cycle hum, but not contribute to the tone, whereas on a humbucker, those two coils side by side do both. It is the tone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, and so they're not technically single coils, but they're designed to work like single coils and to have a pure, clean, non-effective tone. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna play both of these. I'm gonna move back here into the abyss and Chris won't be looking and don't look into the reflection of the lens. I, 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 all I see is like, I can, nah, I can't really tell anything okay, good. the reflection I'm of the lens. Gonna, so um, you'll see what I'm playing, but... I mostly see my beard. Because it's grandiose. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he's going to play these. I'm not going to look, but let me tell you what I'm going to be listening for. So the big complaint is that, uh, or if you think about how humbucker single coil sounds, right? Single coils have more high end, and humbuckers have more mid range. And when you try to create a noise of single coil, basically you're losing that high end. 
Mm-hmm. That's the complaint. And so, um, in one respect, I could just listen for the lack of hum. I'm going to be in middle position, I think, to try and... Well, the other thing that you can yeah. do is just play and bring up the volume. Because as long as there's a note and there's not silence, you typically don't hear the hum anyway. So. It might be, we haven't tested this, I haven't tested this. It might be the easiest blind test. <laughs> I'll be like, done. I know what that is. You know, and I can also tell the difference because one of these has a painted headstock and you can hear it. You can hear that. Can. Yeah, the resonance gets its way off. So we're going to get all set up and uh, let's see how well Chris knows his own ears. I'm going to hold this while you play and then guess which one you're playing. <laughs> Okay, that's guitar one. Okay, so that was guitar one? That was guitar one. Okay. Oh, it's perfectly in tune. <laughs> Yeah, tune one slightly off. Can you uh, leave it in middle position and do both again? This is middle position. All right, this is going back to guitar number one. think you have an answer? I think I have an answer. So you heard guitar number one, guitar number two, guitar number two, then guitar number one. Okay. What do you think guitar number one was? So first they're pretty close. Yep. Um, I think guitar number one is the Pro 2. Correct. Ah, okay. It had just a tiny, tiny bit more spank, a little bit more bite. But man, they're, I think they're so. pretty close. And I was interested in hearing some of the hum off of the Yeah, Yeah, that, that, still, had, yeah, that yeah. still had hum. They both had hum, Yeah, which is great, because then you can go, oh, well, this one didn't have hum. Yeah. But this had just, just a, a bit, it's like, it's, it's really nitpicky. Nitpicky, but I think... I mean, we only did the middle position because I felt like that would give the fairest, like, sure. get them as close as possible. We can dive in down the road if you want to hear all the pickups and all that. But I think there, you know, usually if I'm getting a ton of hum on stage, I'll flip it to positions four or two yeah. or the middle position or something. There was still hum, but I like non noiseless pickups. But I think if a lot of people listen blind, they'd realize the difference is a lot smaller than, than what you think. You yeah, know. you know, I think each time they've come up with an iteration with Fender specifically, um, you know, they have worked to try to make it more and more and more sounding like just a traditional single coil. Um, you know, I think if we're honest, and it, if you really want to get nitpicky, you then also have to assess the rest of your signal chain, yeah. right? Are you playing primarily clean directly through an amp? Because that's really, that's when you can go, okay, that's the most unaffected. Yeah. You know, now there is something to be said about as you go through pedals, uh, your signal chains increasing, and as your kind of cable length becomes longer, you are going to lose high end. Period. In fact, uh, there's this kind of theory that one of the ways that Hendrix got his tone 
was he would use these coiled cables. And if you think about it, because it's coiled, there's this increase in overall length. Yeah. So the longer your, your cable length and your signal chain, the less high end you have. This is the reason why in pedals there's true bypass and then there's buffered. Mm -hmm. Buffered helps take care of that. True bypass doesn't care. So if you want the most un uh, unadulterated tone, you get true bypass, but you may end up with a weak signal. Yeah. And if you have buffered tone, it helps push that through and it retains some of your high end. There's so many different things that are going on to simply say, oh, it's like you lose some high end from the noiseless pickups, I, I, I think is a misnomer. But if you have all those things being equal, something that starts with more high end should end with more high end. So, you know, but yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty close, at least listening to it with my back turned to the amp. Yeah. You know, but at a gig, no uh, yeah, one cares. Yeah, I think for me, I... Your I Jazzmaster never, is noiseless. It's noiseless, and it was noisy as heck when I was using it to record the <laughs> Well, other it's a Jazzmaster. Um, jazz Good. Master. It's still tradition, then. But, um, <laughs> yeah, my Jazzmaster is noiseless, and I'm always like, oh, i got to get some different pickups in here. And then I play it, and I'm like, man, it sounds great. It yeah. sounds like a Jazzmaster. I do think on on this channel I'd really like to explore some different pickups. Mm -hmm. and Because, I mean, Fender just put out the Cunefe pickups for everything they yeah. put out um the cobalt cuneface for tellies and then you got strat cuneface you know all this fun stuff that it's like outside of choosing yes i made a joke earlier you don't want to get a brand new guitar and then immediately put it into a shop but like <laughs> there are so many options just within what fender makes yeah that you can you don't want vmod 2s you want pure vintage 65s put them in there you know um and noises pickups aren't they're used and they're popular for a reason and it's not just because the technical, like, you know, get a little less hum. It's like, they sound good. And people well, like them. I think there's a, a correlation, too, between the type of player. Like, I, I, I think, generally speaking, that, like, an Ultra Lux is aimed at a modern player who's probably playing with more gain. Yeah. Um, and so the, the noise that you deal with... Uh, as you increase gain becomes exponentially more. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you have a lot of noise issues and you are also using high gain, turn off your compressor and see how it works for you. Because a compressor is going to bring up that noise floor just as it's compressing your highs and you'll deal with more noise. There's a lot of fascinating things that we could even talk about and how you address this. Like with, I was talking at the beginning, uh, doing it with pedals. If you use a noise gate to deal with it by dialing out the hum you are already dialing out your high end yeah because the, the frequencies are so close you might as well at that point not be using yeah. true single coil pickups so yeah. it, it, it feels like a you get over it or you learn to live with it type thing and how you learn to live with it you know will determine you know <laughs> maybe my opinion of you i don't know <laughs> but you know i think there are solutions and and sometimes i think you know it's just it is what it is so. yeah I mean, I think the good, best part about this is VMOD 2 sounded really good, the Noiseless Generation 5 sounded really good, and it's a bummer that guitars themselves are different from each other from series to series all across the board. It's mm -hmm. not like there's a VMOD 2 on every line from Fender's American. Right. You know, like, you get different appointments on the rest of the guitar, different neck, different contours, different tuners, along with different pickups. So don't be afraid to do some research, customize, get what you want, because you might really like the feel of the American Pro 2 and the sound of the noiseless, and you can get those and you can put them in there. Um, but it's worth it to look beyond what's coming stock on your guitar and kind of decide what works best for you. And Yeah, I mean, Fenders know. are known for being like modular. You can change yeah. a lot of stuff, but pickups are pretty much like that for every guitar. Yeah. It's one of the easiest and most changeable things you can have. Um, so there's a lot of options out there. It would be fun to really further explore that if yeah. they're down. So just let us know if you're down for that. If you're down, we'll do it. And what do you think about this, this blind test and, and you know, um, you know, what did you hear the differences? Because, you know, I heard them, but they, yeah, I thought they were slight. But for pretty... some people, they might have been, uh, you know, more pronounced through all of the compression that YouTube offers. Yeah. So. But I think it's fun, and I think I would probably want to hear, like, a strat on the neck and the bridge or something, you know, like, do it. Because you get noiseless pickups in the Ultra Series regardless of what you're getting. Right. So 
strats, jazz masters, and uh, you know, all of those positions on all these different guitars have really specific sounds. I probably picked the hardest one to differentiate, but also, you know, there was a little difference there. I think if we flipped it to the bridge, it might have been even more noticeable. Probably because it's, it's brighter, but you know, the I think the reason, this just PSA, I think the reason that there was noise on the um, noiseless pickups was because we're in a really old building. And we have all sorts of things we do in this studio to try to make sure that we are filtering our power and whatnot. But at the end of the day, between lights and really old wiring, it's not unusual to pick up noise. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, PSA, when you're struggling with something, take a holistic approach. You know what I hope is a result of this video, if nothing else? People start turning off their compressor pedals. Turn off your compressor and the neon sign in your man cave. Yeah. Nobody's in there. You don't have to impress anybody. Yeah, and you don't need the popcorn machine running, you know, either. Yeah. They get all hot and oily. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're the, the type that's a never noiseless, uh, weigh in in the comments and, you know, let's get into an argument for fun. Yeah. Yeah. For funsies. And if you're new to our channel, you should like, subscribe, follow, comment, and you should go to our website, which yeah. is which is alamomusic.com, where you can find the fenders that we've got in stock. And uh, I chose that Ultralux because it had a maple neck and I wanted to keep them as similar as possible. However, my favorite Ultralux is in stock right now and that's the Surf Green one. And that yeah. one's been really hard to get a hold of. So we got some cool Ultra stuff. We got American Pro 2s and we got some American Vintage stuff, even though they're really hard to get. Yep. We got a couple left and we're waiting on more, but just let us know what kind of fenders you're looking for and we'll get them for you. So thanks so much for showing up and hanging out. We'll be here to see you next time. Bye.